Hello everybody, my name's East, and I'm going to be uh, casting a game that has happened in the past. This is Master Road D versus Mariana. Uh, this is a game that was part of Temtem's Player vs. Dev series. Uh, I have not yet watched the game myself, so I'm going to sort of cast the action as it unfolds for all of you uh, who are watching the video as we get right away into the draft here. Uh, Mariana is, I believe, uh, Makita in-game. And we can see they've got an adorable little platypet leading off the roster there, as well as a, a pretty standard um, mixed-type mid-rangey sort of team. We see Triple Nature, uh, Double Toxic. Triple Toxic if you include the uh, platypet. And on the other side, uh, Master Rod D playing a very slow-paced, uh, bulky team. We can see uh, the presence of the Turok and the Bolgon, uh, the Garandra Akronox, lots of times that these, this day and age sort of like to be played bulky. And uh, we'll see the opening of the draft here, the Tyranach and the Tyranach being banned out. So this is a dinosaur-free uh, battle here. Dialis leading off in the blue slot. Master Rod D is going to counteract that with Nidrasil Garander. And Makita following up with Aohi. As we see the second bans come out, it's going to be Nidrasil getting the ban. And Tolkien uh, getting the ban as well. So no uh, no Firewind Tem to threaten things as we see Platypet has picked up. Uh, being sort of counteracted by double potentially double electric here. No, we'll see Aquanox instead. So Aquanox Volgon picked up in the back. Lots of Toxics and Electrics here coming out from Master Rod D. The Nestle in the Volpe coming back in response there. So going to be a little bit difficult for uh, Mariana to deal with the presence of all these Toxics. Not a lot of like wind attempts to answer it. And we're going to get right into the battle here as the last pickup is that Nestle. We see uh, Nindrasil Garander going to be picked up first. Gaelis and Aohi on the other side for Makita. Gaelis' resistance is going to stop that Mom's Lunch from giving it the exhausted status. Um, I am watching a pre-recording here, so I'm kind of at the mercy of the uh, camera person here for the X button. Uh, as we can see, the exhausted status affecting Aohi and Garander, that'll make stamina costs way higher or some of their high cost moves. Okay, Alice shrugging that off thanks to the resistance trait. Oh, there's a whoopsie. Oh, I think this is related to the missing sound in game. And we return just in time to see the action pick up. Quetzalenyo doing decent damage to Garander. Nid going for the spores onto the resistant guy Alice. And Garander throwing the wastewater into Aohi. That'll hit it for enough to take it down with the second one. So Quetzalenyo, uh, the audio at least for that had played. So now we got our sound back. We can see that the double into Garander did pretty respectable damage. Uh, would definitely take it down again. But Gaelis now has those powerful crystal moves available. So Garander could go down to a crystal move here. And that would probably trigger up Ignis Fatus for the Aohi, which will allow it to evade uh, an attack coming forward here. But uh, Makita off to a pretty good start. Let's see what the Tamers go for here. You see the Crystal Bite? Whoa, hold up. My, on my end, I gotta get back there. Perfect. The crystal Bite does take down the Garander. Aohi's uh, gonna go ahead and pick up the extra evasion there that'll let it dodge the allergic spread, so no toxic ticks will be applied. Aoki now sitting at perfect stamina for that, so it did not overexert. It will have the ability to attack, but it might want to consider getting out of here, as it is threatened. But so is the Gyalis by the Earth move here from Akronox. The 
could see Makita go for maybe a double into that Akronox. Or perhaps something targeting the Nidrasil. Quetzalinho is available. And would deal quite a bit of damage. It is hard to say. The backline advantage looks like it's favoring Master Rod D, though. That Platypet, cute as it is, not the strongest competitive Tem. It does struggle a little bit into the high stats of the fully evolved Tems in this game. So nobody swaps out. Akronox is going to take the hook kick, and it's going to drop low. Ow, he's going to go ahead and throw a Hypnosis out into the Nid. That's a big overexertion, however. And Akronox will follow up with Soil Steam, and that'll be enough to bring down Gyalis. So, Akronox goes down. Ow, he's picking up the Ignis Fatus, but it doesn't actually accomplish anything at this point in the game. And we can see that Ow, he is overexerted, so it won't be able to attack. And that means that uh, Akronox is looking very dangerous here. Ulfi can come in to check it with Plague, perhaps. No great swap-ins for that. We see Makita's going to go with Nestle instead. Will they opt to keep Aoki or swap it out? You would imagine with Nestle Volgon in the back, this Aoki's not accomplishing that much. Maybe it wants to simply let itself be taken down here. Setting up the Volfi to have a pretty strong endgame into Volgon Nestle if this Nid can be dealt with. Makita immediately swaps out the Nestle, though. Going for Volfi instead. This is a very low tempo play. Rotten Goo going to punish that as uh, Nidrasil simply rests. Out here, Nid are resting. Yeah, a bit of a low tempo swap there. We did see the Rotten Goo revealed. No electric swap in to give it synergy, so Makita could try and sneak a, a plague in there now. Interesting that we didn't see them do anything with a Nessla on that turn one. Maybe they felt like they would have gotten outsped by a Pryo Rotten Goo, but... That low tempo turn may be what ends up costing them. As the Nid is wide awake and ready to inflict some pain here. Algi instead is going to go for Hypnosis into the... No, that's not going to work. The alerted status on the Nid... It's more than enough to keep it alive. How oh, he is going to go down to the Soil Steam. And a nice overexertion here if this, uh... Well, the Team Elusive dodging the Allergic Spread. And both he's just going to go for Light Bull Sap. Maybe the plan was to get some sort of Kaleidoscope there. But regardless, Volfi is building up those Light Bull Picks of its own. Platypet hits the board. So with the Alhi down, Master Rod is looking in a pretty good spot. I mean, Platypet, Nestle, and Volfi don't exactly threaten Nidrasil in a meaningful way, so the Tres Serpientes could simply just sit on board here. Not getting hit with any of the fire, mental, melee, or crystal moves. A big benefit for Nid is it's going to be able to just shrug off a lot of the damage here uh, that's coming from the other two. By the way, going for the fin beat there into Akronox, that's not going to mean up to bring it down. Nid goes for the spores. This is just to counteract the effects of that lifeful sap. Dust Vortex into the Nid. This is chip damage that is not entirely pointless. The Nid does need to get taken down at some point. Both he can counteract these spores, though. Or at least it has that going for it. This Akronox is somehow still alive. Uh, after taking that hook kick, it just has been completely ignored by Makita here. And uh, the Volpi can get rid of it with a plague. But it, it kind of just sits here. Aquanox manages to go first now with the Venom spread. Big damage into the Volpi. And a heavy punish there from uh, 
Yeah, as it outspeeds the plague. A heavy, heavy punish for Master Rod. As uh, Arc Shield is going to make it very difficult for physical attacks to do meaningful damage to the Nid. So that Fin Beat is doing even less. Not entirely sure why Platypet is, is Fin Beat in this matchup. It's not particularly beneficial. Uh, some sort of toxic attack would definitely be doing more damage to the Nid. Um, but we see the Volphy now no longer has Lightful Sap, so it is knockoutable by the Nid. We see Finbeat come out again. It's not entirely clear if Platypet has another move. We won't get to see it as Volgon connects with Thunderstrike, and that will definitely take down Platypet. This means Volgon is going to be vulnerable to the Dust Vortex, though, and it will take that full on. Uh, its bait will be activated. Volpi not overexerted means it can try to throw a Sledge Gift or something, but... This battle appears to be all over, but the crying is Nid is unmovable at this point. Resists all of the attacks coming out of uh, Makita's Thames. I guess the Platypet uh, just kind of spamming Finbeat. Uh, not entirely clear uh, why. Uh, I think Platypet, as we showed in our uh, Little Cup exhibition, does have some pretty strong uh, techniques on the uh, on that side of things. Volgon going to go for the Willpower Drain. Try to make Volpi overexert itself. The Noxious Bomb going for the next level. Big damage coming out. We do see the overexertion on the Nid. And the Lightful Sap, unfortunately, due to the Willpower Drain, the Volpi will just take itself out due to overexertion. That Willpower Drain coming in clutch for the Volgon there. It's now Nestle. It just has no way to really deal with these temps. It can try to go for some sort of Bright Beam play and maybe try to play the Stamina game with Nid, but... Its attacks just don't deal enough damage, and a single Noxious Bomb connecting. Well, that'll be it. Water Blade triggering up the Hydrologist. We see that revealed, so not Electric Synthesized Nesla. That means it's going to have a really hard time. It has no healing available. And Master Rod has its has their own Nesla in the back, and because this one is not Electric Synthesized on Makita's Nesla, that's going to be game over. One toxic or electric move. It spelled the end of the game. We're gonna see Water Blade instead. Bright Beam will prolong the match slighter, slightly longer, keeping Nestla in the game. Noxious Bomb is going to remove that. And now this should be it. As uh, there's really no way for Nestla to sort of continue on here. It has run out of evasion. We'll just wait for the Tamers to lock in their moves here. Observing the background and our lovely battle music. The Water Blade, again, Nestle hangs on. Gets a full-on Thunder Strike into the Nid, and again, it's just not going anywhere. Master Rod actually electing to rest it out here and just keep water blading the Nestla with Nestla. Maybe just milking some extra turns out of the game here. Both players preparing for game number two. It's going to wait to see what's going on. Uh, water Blade is going to connect and hit the Nestla, and that'll be it for game number one. Master Rod D... Jumping out to a 1-0 lead. Um, hard not to be, you know, the negative Nancy out there. Uh, where, you know, the, uh, the Platypet hitting the board maybe was the decisive turn in that game. Unfortunately, uh, despite these nice-looking Platypets in the background of this image, uh, not the most effective Tim strategically. We do see the Peranian lurking back there. Now that's a Tem. That's a Tem that should get some more love. Some more attention competitively. Don't discount Mr. Shark. See if the players are the players are allowed to change their teams between games. We do see uh, Makita has brought a different team, as has Master Rod D. 
the I believe the Platymus and the uh, Pocus are uh, new additions to this one. Makita seems to have swapped out some of their Thames as well. We see Valash and Tataru. Uh, not the happiest Tataru if Pocus is still available to be picked. We see Nidrasil is banned out instead, though. That could indicate something else being planned here. And it's going to be Tyranach being picked up first. Tyranach immediately goes up against Double Toxic if Master OD uh, wishes. Instead, it's going to be a Tyranach and Platinus. Kita hovering the token, and we will see that picked up. So, uh, an interesting trading situation here, as if token token cannot apply the heater status, uh, burn status through heater to the Platinus, as surely one of these Tyranax is Intimidator, which will block traits. That means it is pretty unlikely that Makita will be able to bring down the Platypus in one turn. That opens up an Aquatic Whirlwind KO situation, or a Toxin Shower defensive situation. So Makita will have to put a lot of pressure on the Platypus here. As we see the second bands come out, the Focus has been banned, and the Valash as well. So Tataru will get its time to shine here if it is selected. No Focus to check it. Gaiao is picked up on both sides. Kita hovering the Tataru. Does seem like a superior choice to the Nestle here. And it does get picked. Backline situation probably favoring Makita a little bit at this point, but the Turok picked up as a high value Tim as well. Here we go. Platymus Tyranach going to go ahead and hit the board for Master Rod D. On the other side, we're going to see Tyranach and Tulkin. Uh, no traits are revealed, so this is Paramaniac Tulkin. Definitely a Pyromaniac Tulkin. This doesn't change too much for the interactions between these Tims. Uh, Platymus could be hit with a Sharp Leaf plus a Wind Burst here, and that would be pretty substantial damage. Probably not enough to bring it down but uh, definitely a, a consideration in terms of getting some damage in for later. Instead, Tyranach is just going to be leaving the game. Gyalis is coming in. Platymus gets off that Aqua Bullet Helm. Big damage into the Tolkien. Tolkien fires back with a Wind Burst. Platymus takes a pretty hefty hit. And the Embers, which was targeted at the other Tyranach, will score a big hit onto the Gyalis, knocking it to 63. So, Makita will understand from that interaction that Tolkien is slower than Platypus. It could be saved. Its tornado is likely faster than Garander, Tyranach, and Turok, but it is likely slower than the Pryo techniques of Gyalis and Platypus. So, the Thames it can hit don't care that much. Oh, it's simply going to go first and get a tornado off. Master Rod D, maybe anticipating a swap, doesn't go for Aquatic Whirlwind and is punished very hard for it. Gyalis is going to go ahead and land a hook kick into Knack. That's pretty good damage. But I like the Meteor Swarm coming back from Knack. This is going to deal more damage to Gyalis than Embers, and it's also going to bring down Tolkien. So Platymus traded in, and even after the Tornado scoring the KO, Master Rod D coming out ahead in terms of material uh, after this one. Hook Kick has been committed, so Tyranach comes back in. This should be a pretty free Turok here for Master Rod D, and that is exactly what we see. Uh, this board state looking pretty favorable for Master Rod D. No Vulfi coming out there. Uh, maybe a slight misplay from Makita, as this board, unless Tyranach has Sharp Leaf, is t almost completely tilted in Master uh, D's favor. Seeing this, the Gyalis is going to retreat, the Tataru coming in here. It's actually a double swap, Vulpi coming in for Knack, so... Maybe trying to get away from outgrowth here as Feather Gatling will hit the Vulpi. It seems pretty bulky. It's a hand fan Turok. Bit of an interesting item choice there, or a bit interesting gear choice. 
Nutrition Bar Tataru is going to soak up those embers like it's nothing, though. Less than 20% damage dealt. Now, Tyranak is low on stamina, so Makita can choose to ignore it and go for the hits onto the Turok slot. Plague plus Major Slash will deal heavy damage to Turok. Turok just simply stays in. The Turbine is going to deal big damage to the Vulpy. Tactical Strike being triggered up there. Intimidator no longer active if it was in the first place. Hand Fan dealing big damage. And Makita going back for the Lightful Sap on Vulpy, just trying to keep it bulked up. Tyranak is going to eat a Major Slash here, and this is big damage. And it goes from the Team Elusive dodging the Meteor Swarm. That's nice there. And Tyranak overexerting. This kind of helps equal things out. We see the building blocks on Nap, but it's very low HP. Makita can simply uh, see, look to ignore the Tyranak at this point and target that Turok slot instead. Volfi, hard to bring down, even for Hand Fan Turok. Master Adi is going to switch out the Tyranak, get some hold up on Gerunder. And Volpi just goes and goes for the bush. Trying to dodge out an attack from Turok here. Turok goes for Rockfall, which is already dodged by Team Elusive. Maybe predicting some sort of swap there. Tataru. Perfect jab is going to hit the Gerunder that comes in, which is a very nice trade there. Uh, if Tataru can get Major Slash off into the Minus Defense Garander, that plus a Dust Vortex will surely clinch the KO here onto the Garander. And not a lot of good swaps from Master OD uh, into that setup, so the best they can hope for is maybe taking down Tataru with a double, but they'd have to be faster on their Garander. And the Dust Vortex is going to hit first. Garander drops low. Tataru's going to get Held Anger off as well. Perhaps Turok just resting this turn. No, the Turok gets hit with the Held Anger instead. Oh, not going for the guaranteed follow-up. The beef up from Garander going onto itself. A crazy turn from all players. All four Thames involved. This nothing goes down. We continue this on to another turn. Volfi very likely does not have a Sludge Gift to land here. So if Garander now can outspeed the Tataru, because it has Pai's Electric Blow available, uh, this means that Garander is safe from damage from Volpi here. The turbine is going to hit Volpi. That's big damage. It can be shrugged off by that uh, regen ticks on the Volpi, but Wardrum amping its damage even further. We see Volpi gets the Plague off. Doesn't outspeed the Turok, however, which is definitely unfortunate. And the Pai's Electric Blow... With the beef up, that's more than enough to take down Tataru. Makita, hard punished for not going after the Garander with both attacks on that turn. Not securing the KO when it was available. And that means that Master Rod D is continuing to get value out of Garander and Turok. Setting up their own Gyalus and Tyranak for value later in the game. Gyalus hits the board. It still does not have Hook Kick active. However, Sharp Stabs is more than enough to take down whatever comes in here. A Sharp Stabs combined with Dust Vortex will score a KO, but it will likely cost the Volpi its life. But Turok can't attack without overexerting, probably to its own knockout. So let's see what happens here. Gyalus is first to move, and Crystal Bite will finish off Garander. Turok goes for the Feather Gatling. It's targeting Volpi. That's going to be... Not quite a KO. Volpi goes for Lightful Sap, but it's already sapped. That's not going to do anything, and it takes itself out to overexertion. A mechanical misunderstanding there for Makita. And that leaves a Tyranak on Gyalus endgame here. Now, Gyalus and Turok are in an interesting spot. Um... If, if Master Rod D can move first on their Gyalus and deliver the double gash here to KO Makita's Gyalus, then there's almost no way that Tyranak can get back into this game. Um, but if the Gyalus manages to force a KO onto Turok with Sharp Stabs, we'll see. Gyalus actually outspeeds with double gash, so Sharp Stabs not required. It was a speed tie. The double gash will KO the Gyalus. And now Tyranak will get to land in Embers. We see it as bait. Now Meteor Swarm will definitely secure a KO here. 
as these two... Actually, it may not. 22.6% plus one defense. That Tyranek may be able to survive long enough to get off two attacks. And that could be enough to seal the game here. Tyranek going to drop the 71. The other Nat goes first. Flaming Meteorite comes out. Big damage. Makita's Tyranek is dropping low. The Meteor Swarm. This has to kill the Nat on the right here. It won't. So if a double can be secured here, it's going to be close. Makita has to go for outgrowth here. And hope that they're the faster Tyranek. Hey, Alice. Double gash into Tyranek. The first aid kit, that's a big activation, but it's a meteorite. That's no good at all for Makita. That means Tyranek is going to overexert here. Oh, no, they don't quite overexert. They have enough to score another hit here. It means we could be going to a game number three. That first aid kit activation, a huge deal for Makita, who's managed to turn this around, just needs to score that one last hit. Oh, the Tyranak a little bit too slow. Embers onto Embers. And that Embers being the final blow to win on the 14th turn. Makita will take the victory. And so we'll get a game number three. Yes, yes, we're getting a game number three. Okay, perfect. I thought the, the cheerleading might have meant something else, but no, we are getting a game number three. Mariana and Master Raw D going to a decisive third game. We'll see what teams they bring here, as they are allowed to change teams between sets. Between games of the set. We're... Uh, Waiting for that to get going. Very interesting uh, set of turns there. The Garander turn. Uh, almost teetering over a very good position for Makita, but she was able to... Or Mariana. And she was able to um, still clutch things out with the Tyranak in the endgame. The big mythical dinosaur. Producing lots of KOs. The crucial speed tie of the two Gyalises using uh, Double Gash ended up being uh, perhaps the difference there. I wonder, looking at my uh, research here, if the meteorite was done not to overexert. Let's look up. Tyranak. Outgrowth 24, meteorite 29. No, so outgrowth, if available, likely would have been the play there, but... We get into the draft for game number three. Makita playing a much different looking team. We see a double Hellfire user. On double water here, lots of spread moves on this team. Um, Ociara joined by Hedgin and Rakash. We see the Volfi band out. That makes Leeds a little bit unsafe for Makita. She's going to go with Gyalis, but even Gyalis has a lot to answer for here. Two fires and two earths available for Master Rod D. We see Gyalis of their own coming in with a Tyranak here. Nikita is hovering Inky. That's a very bold Inky choice. Not at all a friendly board for Inky uh, early on in this game. OCR is going to get banned out. As, you know, looking at this draft, it's really not a very friendly Inky game at all. Um, Platymus... Uh, every Tem on the other team has an option to hit it for at least damage it isn't resisted, and a lot of them have two Xs, so this Inky, a very interesting pick early on in the draft here. We're going to see Volfi and Platinum come out from Master Rod D. This is a very safe draft with this version of the team. Um, no Pocus on this draft. We're going to see 
Chin Rock picked up its last Tim here. But a very strong looking uh, board here with Tyranach Gaialis to start off the game for Master Odd D. Let's see if they can clutch it out. Or if Mariana is going to bring home a win for Crema. Someone's Gaialis just activated Heavy Armor. It is Makita. Okay, that is... Not something you see very commonly. Gaelis attempt that can definitely make use of its speed, so it being uh, heavy armor is a little bit uh, unconventional. Uh, normally you see Gaelis just really try to take advantage of their speed. Um, unless Makita is, of course, playing the based uh, East 2-5 slower Gaelis. Hedgen swapped in. Gaelis going for the double gash. Gaelis going to the double gash. And Tyron X going to go for Embers. Hedgen doesn't go down to either of those. It is uh, threatened by Hook Kick here, but not, not to the point where it's KO'd. Binary Flood is available. That could be very valuable. Dealing big damage to Gaelis. Have to watch out for Mirroring, though. Intimidator blocking. Gotta go fast. Gaelis will retreat. It's Chirac coming in. We'll see Hedgen just going for an ordinary Hellfire. No Binary Flood. It will still deal 2x to Gaialis. Intimidator blocking the mirroring there. Gaialis is going to go right back at the Hedgen. Hook Kick dealing huge damage. Not quite enough to bring it down, but the Meteor Swarm will do so. And just like that, Hedgen removed from the situation. Gaialis has lost Hook Kick, so Turok does threaten it out here. Not a lot of good swap-ins to uh, Gaialis combined with Chirac, though. You can see a wind move and a melee move, putting a lot of pressure onto Master Rod D. But the Gaialis will get to move first as the... Uh, Nesla comes out here instead. Maybe trying to go for some sort of double prio situation to get ahead of the Gaialis. Could Turbine and Water Blade maybe take down the Gaialis before it attacks with Crystal Bite? Because this Crystal Bite creates a ton of threat uh, onto the Nestle here. And of course, Outgrowth from Tyranac looks incredibly good here. We just see Gaialis leave in favor of Volpi. Volpi's going to get that Chamomile activated. Tyranac leaves as well. Passing up. Master RG just passing up a really good uh, double in there to... Oh, and, but they do catch the Water Blade going the other way. But the Turbine hits the Platymus... That's a big get from for Makita as Platymus goes straight from full to zero. Not the bulkiest Platymus out there. Taking the turbine, it will go down. Master Rod D likely kicking themselves, not going for the outgrowth plus crystal bite there. We'll see Turok come in instead. Now, it's very important for Makita that she doesn't necessarily neglect this Vulpy. It's very difficult for her team to bring down. Um, if the Gaialis can't land Hook Kick onto it. So either she's saving the Gaialis' Hook Kick for it, or she's going to have to figure out some other plan. It's Camomile Bulpy, which is very strange. Uh, very uncommon gear, you know, Bush and Lightful Sap. Pretty good moves on that Tem. We will see everybody stays in. The Nesla going for the Thunderstrike instead of the Aquatic Whirlwind, which is more damage, and the Feather Gatling splitting... There, the Volpi tries to Lifeful Sap with Chamomile active. I'm not entirely sure what I'm witnessing right now. A Stone Ball hitting the Nestla. And everybody uh, manages to survive being knocked out. Very strange turn of events there. Uh, just a couple mechanical mishaps, I would say. Water Blade from Nestla would definitely have dealt more damage to Turok. And anything that could swap in there would have resisted Thunderstrike. So not entirely clear why that move was chosen. Uh, on the other side, Volpi, Lightful Sapping with Chamomile Active. Very strange. Nestle going for Electric Storm now, perhaps forgetting that Turok is an Earth Tem. We will see the Turbine into Volpi. That's pretty solid damage, but again, not enough. Um, both of these Tems really water a much more effective option than Electric. Volpi is just going to Bush, not take the kill, uh, not take the KO offered to it. On the other side, Turok goes for Stone Ball again on Nesla, and that'll be enough to bring it down. A, a very strange turn of events here, as uh, the Nesla refusing to use the water move 
has cost Makita pretty dearly, I would say here. As now, both Gyalis and Inky are definitely threatened by Earth moves. We'll see what the Tamers go for here. It's going to be Inky, so this is immediately going to get taken down by a Dust Vortex. No real ways around it. And with two electric resists in the back, it's kind of hard to justify why this hand was selected. Unless there's some sort of novice punch gambit maybe aimed at the Volfi here. A synergy novice punch. No, instead we'll just see Sparkling Bullet and the Turok mysteriously stays in. No swap to either of the free double resists in the pattern. We see the Plague go into the Turok, so the Inky is actually going to be allowed to stay in the game here. It, Feather Gatling's going to hit Volpi pretty hard. It might not be enough for Sharp Stabs to finish it off, but it's going to be close. Turok gets the Rock Fall off. That'll take down the Inky. As uh, no Thunder Strike means Turok will live to see another day. Turok will take itself down to overexertion, but it's not something that uh, Master Raw D is going to mind too much. As Volpi can absorb a double gash to go down here, and Tyrant actually be able to win the game from that position. As there is no spread moves here really available thanks to Team Elusive. Turok's Tent uh, activated on Makita's side, not something you see very often. Um. The, the tent, an interesting choice on Turok there, will make it a lot harder to take down. Possibly means that it can survive an attack uh, if Makita can outspeed the Volfi with Double Gash here. No, nothing doing. Tent will not save you from that plague. Volfi gives itself up to do so. Gyalis does get to land a hook kick into Tyranek here. But that will need another double gash to score a KO. And the Flaming Meteorite, that heavy armor, will not protect you very much, Gaelis. Not from Meteors, as... Gaelis returns, and that should be all she wrote here. As uh, Gaelis is going to be going up against Tyranek and another Gaelis. And it's just a little bit too slow with that heavy armor. And also, uh, some previous... M missteps, perhaps, as Tyranak takes the series with Embers. So Master Rod D will emerge victorious uh, in this player versus dev uh, show match best of three. Thank you so much. Um, obviously, 23rd of August has already passed, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and those matches. There should be one more video uh, coming out at some point with a more detailed, sort of in-depth uh, explanation of how to watch competitive Temtem. So if you're new to the scene, new to the game, be sure to check that out. Uh, until next time, my name's East, and have a great uh, rest of your day.